get everything. So we remain same um, um, uh, miserable. We don't really succeed because we don't work on here. We are to achieve success. Actually, the world, how much success we may attain, but to enjoy the success, adjustment has to be done here, not there. To succeed, uh, we need secular education in the world. How to beautify the world, how to make a park, how to make the airport, we need secular education. But to enjoy what we have made, we need to do some Bhajnir adjustment here. For that purpose, picture only can help. No, we, we will not get help from anybody else in the school or college. Then the solution Puja Gurudev is telling that uh, first we have to plan. Planning is very much needed. Planning. Then planning should be with promptitude. That means we should do it once we plan, once we know that yes, it is needed, we should do it immediately. For example, like suppose you want to marry somebody. Before the marriage, do you know how many things we do? All our cool things we take picture. It is very nice, isn't it? To go to Las Vegas and go to the sea beach, very interesting. But we have not prepared. After the marriage, you will see that everything is completely different. Completely different. That means we have not prepared at the if that time we cannot prepare. One cannot prepare when one is in the exam hall. One has to prepare before the exam hall. So promptitude should be there. One should be prompt. At the right time, right thing has to be done. And um, what is right time and what is right thing, it, it doesn't come that way. It, it, it comes to some people who are very alert, who are extremely vigilant. They will know that, yes, this is the time to do. So promptness should be there. And haste is a waste. Pujagudu is mentioning if one is hurried, if one is trying to do something um, uh, because one is anxious, then it will not yield result. Instead of success, one will have um, failure. And every opportunity will be converted into obstacles. But a person who knows how to work promptly and has to slowly, slowly means I'm not telling a lazy person, not lazy, slowly, do everything very coolly in a calm mind. Keep the mind, mind calm. And then heart free from all the three difficulties through which three channels through which all the energy is dissipated. Which Buddha has mentioned in this chapter that worries of the past or regrets of the past, anxiety for the future, and excitation in the present. These three, the three channels in which all our energy get dissipated. Since our mind has no energy at all. So all other things will not work. Promptitude is just not possible. One cannot, uh, one cannot succeed because this person is not prepared. So success, actually, uh, um, success in the material world has no meaning at all. For us, success means we think that achieving something in the material world. It is a finite thing. But success is really here. The experience of success is here, it is never there. And it is told in our scripture that really, truly, we are Sat, Chit, and Ananda. <clears throat> Sat means eternal, Chit means consciousness. Our consciousness is always complete, there is nothing lacking in that. If we realize our true nature, then we are always successful. Not that if we achieve something, then we will be successful. No, we are success by nature, not that we will be successful. The, in the very attempt to be successful, we make ourselves failure, we will never succeed. So that is in chapter Puja Gurudev is emphasizing. And then he is telling to develop this ability to be alert and vigilant and uh, to be prompt and to maintain equanimity, three things have to be done. First thing he is telling, do prayer every day. In the morning, morning time is for prayer and that is not the time to to sit in the computer and uh, what the stock market is doing. And now I think I know what is sitting in the stock market, everything is gone. But anyhow, when you get up, either we go to the Facebook or I don't know what other accounts, but uh, Twitter or something, we spend our time in that one. And then people write all the garbage. It, then nobody is going to tell regarding Hanumanji. Everyone will tell all useless things. And I dump in my mind and then try to live happily on that day. It, is, it will never happen. In the morning time, we should put something good, not tea or coffee. 
good things we should put. Those good things are, it is told, Prapasmana mantras are there. Prapasmara nehodesan svaradatma dattvam. These are called Prapasmana mantras. What we should think early in the morning? First, what we should think regarding ourselves. There it is told, we should, instead of thinking, I am so and so, I am the most useless person. I don't know a lot of stress and strain and I have never succeeded in my life. My dad has the heart problem and his dad had heart problem, so I'm going to get heart problem. Instead of thinking this way, who really we are? If we think that way, surely our day will go good. So in the morning when you do prayer, we make the connection with God. When you make connection, all the godly qualities will come and download in us. So we are ready to you know, go to the next step. Then you have to remember him. Second is remember him constantly. When you remember him, like if you remember our girlfriend or boyfriend, then what happens? You must have experienced that when you remember uh, what happens, you will have feeling. Because when you remember, we think. Thinking, constant thinking creates feelings. And that feelings are called emotion. Emotion one can feel. If we think regarding God, then only we will have feelings for God. Like people tell we are God is inside. We don't feel that way. We feel that there is a devil sitting here. No, God is there. But we are not thinking. So next is remember him. And third one is, try to contemplate on him. When you contemplate on the Lord, whatever we will think continuously, that quality, our mind will take the shape of that. Whatever we will think. If you are thinking God is peace. If we think of God, um, uh, peace, then automatically our mind will be peaceful. So there will be stability will be there. There will be no disturbance. Then whenever, whenever we are doing some work, difficulties will be plenty. And those difficulties will never be shattered because our mind is spoiled. So karukhe same kurta, that means lavha lavho jaya jayo. Whether it is success or failure, it doesn't matter because our mind is not oscillating anymore. These three things one has to do. So first, Pujya Gurudev has told what are the difficulties. Second thing, what are the difficulties we face in life and how to attain success. And second thing, he told that how our mind, the energy of the mind is dissipated. And third thing, he is telling how to take that and attain success. That is the topic in the um, chapter 7. And chapter 8, um, it's in the present moment is the best moment. It is the most auspicious moment. Like how people look for graha, nakshatra, and all those things, this horoscope. And uh, no, this present moment is the only moment where one can work. And that is the most auspicious moment. We should not look for the, whenever something good has to start, start immediately. Don't look for some good stars, start immediately. And then um, um, when obstacles, opportunities are coming to everybody. But Puja Gurudeva has told either we are sleeping or we are out. No, we should be there to grab the opportunity. And we surrender attitude to the Lord. If we go on doing the work, surely we succeed. Success, success is our worth, right? Nobody can take that away from us. And uh, thank you so much. Now 25 minutes is over. Thank you, Swamiji. We have a question from Soumya. So Soumya, I'm going to unmute you so you can ask Swamiji. Hey, hi, you Thank you. So my question is, how do we reconcile destiny and relinquishing control to the higher while also taking responsibility for our own actions? Thank you. Swamiji answer. Swamiji is unmuted. Yes, yes, now I can tell. See, destiny means the situation around us, the present destiny, and which is the which you call as prarabdha, and it has happened because of the past. There are so many reasons are there, we are responsible 
for the present situation what is created around us suppose you will tell swami you look like a donkey that you have told okay i cannot do anything and you took the mic and you told that and you ran away i cannot do anything but you have told this is the destiny okay but now how i will respond to that that is entirely depending on me it is not depending on anybody else it is not depending on another person the responding how i respond is depending on my what is my what are the qualities in me depending on my vasana i will respond to that so if i respond properly i don't react i respond properly then my future destiny will be created the future will be bright at least i'll put a seed for a future fright future um, 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 bright future bright future so now the destiny is not really deciding our our future this is not deciding it is our attitude towards a particular situation is deciding our future so from that standpoint always we have the freedom so we are not a victim of the destiny and what was the next next part uh i i think that was most of the questions swami ji uh just the second part of the question was how do we uh take responsibility for our own actions then yes it is um, um, remember we are really not responsible for the for the results of action but we are surely responsible for the action because we are doing that one what result will come is not in our hand there are millions of factors uh, are there depending on which a result will obtain but the action is entirely in our hand that is called self effort it is in our hand and whenever we are doing anything we should put 100% in that one we should love the work but if you see uh, when we fail if we analyze then we will see that our attention is in the what i will get so our attention is not on the work so surely that work is not 100% suppose i am a doctor i am going to the hospital to treat the patients but uh, really in my subconscious mind it is there that how i will get the salary how i will get more money so it is not 100% we're not we are not able to put 100% as a result that action doesn't re- yield good result if i have put my 100% then surely i will enjoy whatever because i have enjoyed the work surely i will enjoy the result now we are suffering the work and we want to enjoy the result it is there no connection so responsibility is to do the work 100% with dedication with humility because it is because of god's power we are able to do thank you does anybody have any other questions you can send it to shubhani Okay, there is Suraj. I will unmute you. Go ahead, Suraj. Hi, I'm Swami Ji. Um, so in our discussion group, we started talking about um, self-confidence and some ways that we can improve self-confidence on our day-to-day activities. Um, does Swami Ji have any suggestions on how, um, as we... as we go on we can develop and improve our self confidence day to day actually uh, the people who have got lot of confidence they commit more mistakes they will commit more mistakes actually self all problems in the world is done by self confident people they know everything so you cannot tell them anything because they are confident and they will walk how the self confident they will walk like this and they will look up even they will not look down at all and they will walk so confidently and they will trip on a stone and they will fall so we are not talking of self confidence self confidence without clarity will bring disaster if we have don't have clarity self confidence is not useful at all so what scripture is telling is of self confidence have self awareness self awareness understand everything clearly if we are uh, self awareness means like it is written in bhagavad gita yomam pasyati sarvatta sarvam cha mai pasyati that means a person who sees me everywhere um, uh, that person will never feel uh, 
fail in life at all, always that person will be with me, that, that is sloka where it is told. What does it mean when we see a person, let us say, I will give an example, um, um, don't take it another way. Suppose I tell somebody as my boyfriend, okay? Now I am thinking that this person is my boyfriend. But what Skitter is telling, no, he is the manifest, this person is the manifestation of the divine. Okay, that means we didn't perceive that person correctly. There is a, something wrong in our perception. We thought that that hairstyle and that uh, color of the skin and that flesh and the muscles, that is the person. And those bones and flesh, how they are arranged, that is called the person. And then I'm dealing not with the person, I'm dealing with the hairstyle, I'm dealing with the nail, the length of the nail, I'm dealing with the, uh, with the muscles. So as a result, I don't meet that person, but recognize a person as it is, as he or she is, not as we want to see that person. If that awareness comes, then always uh, will be successful. There is no need of um, confidence. Automatically, everything will, right thing will happen. We may give different names, but everything will happen automatically. We'll, we'll live happily, we'll deal with everybody um, with love and care, we'll help everybody. Um, then we'll go along with everybody. We'll have no problem for anyone because there's nobody other. So self-awareness is the right word than self-confidence. Swamiji. We have a question from Vaibhav. Vaibhav, please go ahead. Arion Swamiji. Yes, um, my question is, uh, in our, pre in our discussion, we talked about, uh, Suraj gave a, a good point of bringing the goals from the outside to, to what where, where, where we're trying to, you know, do internally. So how, what is the best way to do that? And is the end goal, is the, is success defined as attaining Nirvana? Let us not call in uh, big, big words. Okay. What happens uh, in order to understand one simple thing, we create uh, three more complex words and then we get uh, caught in, the, in those words. Nirvana and all, I, I don't know what they mean really. But mainly, if we analyze ourselves, always we see there are two aspects to a human being or to any living being. One is the material aspect, that the body is the, uh, is the gross matter, mind is also matter, and the intellect is also matter. Mind and intellect, they're subtle matter. Whether it's body, mind and intellect, they're all matter. Matter is always inert and insentient. Okay, that is one factor of a human being. The other factor is the spirit, which is life itself. So life plus matter is the human being. Okay, out of these two, um, um, uh, uh, what the scripture is trying to tell that we are the life because of which this body has meaning. If the life is not coming in contact with the body, then living is not possible. Living is not life. Living is possible because of life. So if our attention is on life, then that life is pulsating everywhere. Uh, somebody, I read somewhere, it is told that we are not really human beings trying to have spiritual experiences but we are really spiritual beings having human experiences. That is the way it is told. So we are the really the spirit. And when, once we recognize that we are the spirit, we'll see the spirit all around. Then um, we are never away from anybody or we are not attached to anybody uh, and we are not going to lose anything. So that is a, um, uh, that means I have brought that, uh, um, I have realized that inside, or I'm thinking, at least thinking regarding that inside. So that is uh, automatically that awareness uh, will come inside. Thank you, Swamiji. I'm on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Swamiji, for yeah. the satsang. We really, really enjoyed. We're so grateful to all of you. Thank you. I'll now pass it on to Amarji. Hello, everyone. Um, 
I hope you all enjoyed tonight's satsang with uh, Swamiji and our new edition of the breakout sessions. I know my group had a great time. Um, and um, one note from our book late team to everyone else is uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Um, this forum of Booklight, we set out to bring together Chick West and expose, for lack of a better word, everyone to different Samajis of the mission, different Sevaks of the mission. Um, this model is something that we've never really done before, wherein each Samaji is taking different parts of the same book, you know, and being able to provide different anecdotes about Gurudev. Um, this format actually was taken by CM West, and now they're training their entire uh, adult Balvihar uh, Sevaks uh, system. So really, I want you all to understand that this is uh, something new, something different, and it's really a wonderful opportunity for others to get involved. Um, so please do spread the word. Uh, right now is uh, the time for everyone to be involved in uh, spiritual sadhana. Um, how to keep calm when everyone else is going crazy. How to stay vigilant, how to be able to forge ahead and continue to do the work that we need to do. Uh, so please, um, do help us. We need, we need help getting the word out to as many people as possible. Um, secondly, so that way you all also are able to join every week. Um, I'm going to share now again the um, book light uh, text group that we have. And there's an automatic reminder that will be sent um, on the day of and uh, 30 minutes before. You all should have gotten text today if you're part of that already. We have more than 50 people who are signed up. So I'm going to share this real quick. So right now, you can actually take a moment and just text at booklight to 81010. Right now, pull out your phone. It's the only time during satsang. We'll ask. Pull out your phone <laughs> at booklight and text that to 81010. I'll take a moment, let everyone text that, and then we'll continue. Right. There may be some questions. Very, uh, we're not keeping any of that information. It's mostly just so that way you guys can get reminders from us. Um, so that way you guys can continue to stay involved. Please spread the word. We can really use it. And others, your friends, your peers can really use this now during this time of satsang. Next week, we'll have Swami Shabbat Manaji. Uh, in. I'm ready in two weeks. Oh, sorry, sorry. Next week, two weeks from now. Next session. Two weeks from now, we'll have Swami Shivatmanandaji from our uh, San Antonio and Austin Center. Um, and Swamiji is also fantastic. Uh, there'll be a lot to learn from him. So continue to spread the word and uh, stay safe. If you have any questions about Booklight or if you'd like to be part of the team, um, I'm going to send out on chat uh, our two emails, Shubhanijis as well as myself. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Uh, and we'll be happy to get you guys involved. Um, really, we could use the help. Uh, help us reach WhatsApps. Help us reach your group. And lastly, um, we said at the very beginning, this group is now going to be opened up to uh, more than just the Chick Age group. But it will be still directed towards the Chick Age group. Um, more so, we were cutting off registration, saying, no, if you're above this age, you cannot join. Um, Participants will be accepted, allowed, and encouraged to join. Uh, and this is just during this period. But don't, uh, don't uh, worry that we will lose the chick vibe, you know? Um, all that said, though, that was a lot of information. I don't want to take away from Sanji Satsang. So thank you all for coming. And uh, we'll see you next week. Or, sorry, two weeks from now, next session. Uh, and now we'll close. Om Purnamada. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurabhyo Namaha Hari Om Hari Om everyone